Whilst FeatureCam is primarily designed for solid models, we can work equally as well from 2D DXF data. In this example, we'll look at working with vertical lathes and working with the DXF data. So here on screen we have some, a DXF file. If I come to the stock tab, we can see it's a very large part at 1.24 meters in diameter. So the first thing I want to do is orientate the part correctly. As we can see currently, the z-axis is pointing to the right when really we want it coming out of the part. To do this, I'm going to select all of the data and use my transform dialog. In this case, I'll be rotating the DXF data 90 degrees around the center point and x-axis. I can preview this. That looks good, so I'm going to click OK. If I now view from the top, we can see that the orientation is not correct. As we're working with a vertical lathe, I'm going to change my viewing style under viewing options to vertical turret lathe. Now when I select the top view, we can see we're working in the correct orientation. I now wish to begin programming the part. Now if we look to the part view, we can see we have no features, only set up one active. So in order to select all of the smaller size holes, what I can do is simply select one hole, come to Edit Select Circles. This automatically recognizes the radius of the circle selected and clicking OK will make a selection of all circles the same diameter. I can then come to my new feature wizard, select to create a hole from dimensions and I'm going to choose to make a pattern from this particular feature. So my diameter's already been filled in. The depth in this case is going to be 35 millimeters. So I can click Next. I'm then going to create a point list pattern in the XY plane. Again, I can say Next. Now what we can see is a preview of all of the hole features, along with the different moves and ordering in which the holes will be programmed. Now we can see the default order, and this can come from the order in which the holes were designed by the designer. However, in this case, we want the tool to take the shortest path possible. So I'm going to come to my sorting tab and specify shortest path. As I click OK, we see the ordering updated, so the tool takes the shortest path between hole features. At this point, I can say Finish. And for this particular example, under the Strategy tab, I'm just going to uncheck Spot Drilling. Now if I run my 3D simulation, what we see are those whole features being machined. We see the tool taking the same ordering as specified within the feature dialog box and working its way around the various features. We'll now skip to the end of the simulation and what we can see is all of those whole features have been machined like so. So I can now repeat the process for the remaining holes on my DXF drawing. So I can make a selection for the center cross holes, select them all by choosing my select circles option, notice the radius is automatically filled in and makes a selection for all circles of the same diameter. Again, I can repeat the process of going into my feature wizard, selecting a whole dimension, specifying the same depth as before, and creating a pointless pattern in the XY plane. Again, I'm going to use my sorting option to denote the shortest path possible. I'm going to say finish, and once again, for this example, remove the spot drilling. I'm going to turn the initial pattern off and run through a simulation 
of my newly created holes. And we see those like so. I can now finally create my outer hole features. Again, selecting a hole from dimensions, we're going to be using the same depth as before and creating the same pattern in the XY plane. If I re-simulate, we see the various machined hole features. So my final task is to create the machine groove between these two lines. Again, I can come into my feature wizard. This time I select turning and groove from dimensions. So if I select the outer circle, I'm told the radius is 482 millimeters. So I'm going to choose my diameter at 482 millimeters times two. The depth is going to be five millimeters and the width is the difference between the outer and inner circles. I've also chosen an orientation of face for my grooving operation. I can then choose to preview this. You can see the grooving operation looks correct but is not in the correct location. So on my next page I can choose the Z height to be zero. Once again preview and my groove looks good. I'm going to uncheck the roughing pass, so I'm just doing a finishing operation in this case, and I'm going to select finish. So if we now play all of my features I've created from my DXF, Then move on to pattern two, machining the holes in the center region. And finally, the outer holes representing pattern three. And we then create the groove shape, which gives us our finished part like so. So that shows working with DXF data for an application on a vertical lathe.